Holly, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you, Kirsty. How are you? Good, yeah, good, thank you. Trying to keep ourselves busy um, during lockdown. It's, it's, it's not so hard for us at one kind because we seem to have a, a vast array of work to do. Um, but what about yourself? Are you, you keeping busy with school? Yeah, I've been um, yeah, trying to catch up lots of school work at the moment. Obviously, we're doing all of it online, so it's a bit different from normal but yeah just school work and just other like small piece like other activism things I'm doing as well. Yeah oh well that's amazing and you're helping us out with One Kind Fest as well which is fantastic. Um, so for those of you that are watching um, at home just now my name is Kirsty and I have the amazing job of working with the volunteers here at One Kind. Um, One Kind is Scotland's largest animal campaigns charity and we exist to end animal cruelty giving a voice to Scotland's animals. So there will be a donate link or a button attached to this post either or um, and yeah please please if you have a few spare pounds we know it's difficult times at the moment and um, but click that link and help us continue our vital work um, we only have about nine members of staff uh, so you can imagine how heavily we rely on our volunteers here at one kind and when we have wonderful supporters like holly um, we don't have to worry about that at all we know everything's in safe hands so um, i just want to start off holly by asking you um, what is it about volunteering that you enjoy so much well, I guess, well, one of the main things for me is that you get to meet like-minded people. So a lot of the time, you know, you're around people who aren't really interested in the things you're interested in. And then, so when you get involved in volunteering, you're around people who have the same opinions as you and who are really interested in um, the things that you all do together. So that is one, a main thing for me. And it's also, it's just so rewarding because obviously you're not getting paid, so you're hopefully doing volunteering by choice and because you want to but yeah I think it's just really rewarding when you spend all those hours like campaigning and you're not getting paid anything and then something come, comes of it and you achieve something and it's just such so amazing to know that you're making a difference so I think those two are like the most important the things that stand out most most for me that's amazing. That's lovely to hear. I, I completely agree. Um, I only started volunteering a few years ago, uh, but I, I, it's the same for me. I've, it's so rewarding to be with like-minded people and to find people that share your passion and your love for animal welfare. Um, it's a fantastic network to be in as well. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Holly. That's great. Um, you know, you're, you're such a passionate person. It's, uh, it's really inspiring. And I know a lot of us are very inspired by you um, at one kind and the volunteers and elsewhere in the world as well. What, what sort of made you decide that you wanted to make a difference? And where did your passion for the natural world come from? Well, I think it was a lot just to how I was brought up. So, I mean, I've, um, like I was brought up by parents who also were interested in the natural world and so they passed that passion on to me and they just let me go outside and form that connection with the natural world and it's also I think partly because I've lived in various places around the world such as New Zealand and Tasmania and where yeah, yeah you get some really fantastic wildlife and you have like so many amazing and unique animals like right on your doorstep and I think that was also a massive um like part of forming that connection with nature because I mean it's so different to Scotland that I mean Scotland's got some really unique wildlife but I don't think it's anything like what you get in places like Australia and New Zealand so that was a key part and then I guess when I started learning about things behind nature so threats that was facing by humans and I guess I'm just not the sort of person who could like turn away from that especially mm -hmm. since nature was such a key part of my life so yeah, I just decided that I wanted to do what I could to make a difference. That's amazing. That's I, I had no idea that you had lived in Tasmania and New Zealand. That's 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 crazy. Wow. Um, I bet it was lovely staying over there. And as you say, there's such a more um, diverse array of wildlife uh, to see. Do you think that um, Scotland's quite sparse in terms of its wildlife? I think well, we definitely do have amazing wildlife, but I mean, it's certainly not as diverse it's certainly not um as wild as places like um like australia and new zealand and i mean it's quite a depleted country so it'd be it'd be absolutely amazing if we could have like animals like wild cats and capitalis and ospreys 
like all over Scotland, but sadly they're only in a few pockets around Scotland. So I think, I mean, yes, yeah, Scotland is an amazing country and I love living here, but it's, yeah, there's a lot we need to work on in terms of ecological um, diversity and um, just wild places. Absolutely, absolutely, Holly. That's very well said. Um, so you know, you you campaign um, all the time for the natural world, um, and as you say, you you're not the kind of person that can turn away from these issues. Um, what you were just telling me just before about your love for wild spaces and diversity. Um, can you tell everyone watching at home just now um, a little bit about what you have been doing over the past few years in terms of your campaigning and your activism? Right, so um, I'm actually relatively new to activism in, in, in comparison to lots of other people because I only began really campaigning for nature about two years ago. Mm -hmm. So it started with, well, I went onto social media and that's where it all began because I could see all these like amazing, passionate young people who are achieving so much. And for quite a long time, I thought that because I was young, I couldn't achieve anything. Like I thought that activism and making a difference was for adults and I had to wait till I grew up. And then, yeah, I went onto social media and I saw all these young people. And then I decided that I, I wanted to get involved in campaigning as well. So I think the first thing I did was I did a fundraising walk because I think that was like the best way I could just make my way, way into activism. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I walked up Ben Nevis to raise money for the Bats Conservation Trust and we raised about £500. Well, wow. so that was the start for me and then I think one of the next things I did quite new on um I got involved in one kind and and then I um also became a young ambassador for Scotland the big picture which um I've been doing for about a year year and a half now mm -hmm. um and so that also brought me into the concept of rewilding and I think that has been quite defining for me because I really like I'm just so interested in rewilding in the way that you, you can bring nature back and how you can restore like bleak hills and, and turn them into wildlife havens. Um, and then I started the school strike. So I've been doing that for about 71, 72 weeks now. Um, just every Friday I've, well, until lockdown, we stood outside of school and um, yeah, refused yeah, to do our work so as a school strike. And then more recently um, I've become a, I've become Heal Rewilding's future rewilding voice, um, which is basically a leadership role within Heal. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm their rewild rewilding voice, and we've also got a climate voice and a well-being voice within Heal. And yeah, that's something else to do with rewilding that I'm really excited to be part of. That's amazing, Polly. You're so busy. Like, I just I can't believe you're managing to balance all these things at such a young age. It's it's so encouraging, and I think that I can speak for everyone watching at home right now when it certainly puts it into perspective how um, how capable we all are of campaigning for the environment and and of making a difference. Um, you know, you've you volunteered with so many organisations there. It's, you've obviously got such a passion for rewilding, uh, which, which is amazing. I, I completely agree. It's there's so much we need to do to restore the natural world and look after it. Um, but in in terms of one kind and the team here, what is it about one kind that made you want to join us? Well, I think, I mean, I remember when um, my friend Lily and I, we first got in touch because we were like wondering what on earth we could do to like to do for animals and nature. And so we had a look through some Scottish charities and we saw one kind. And so we got in touch. And I think the first thing that hit us was how like welcoming and supportive oh. everyone is because we were like, um, we're only like 13 or 14 and we've never done anything like this before. And I mean, that doesn't matter. Um, to you at all so you were just so supportive and welcoming and I think that was definitely part of what made us decide we wanted to volunteer for you because it's not just like the work I mean the work you do for animals is fantastic as well and we can see like that one kind of such an amazing charity that stands up for animals I mean it's not something quite remote you can see like the direct impact they've had but it was also yeah just the atmosphere the atmosphere in one kind was amazing and you could form like friendships with people who work there and it's a really small team so you can get quite personal with them and yeah I think those two things yeah the atmosphere and the fact we could just see 
like the difference you are making for Scotland's animals. And that was what I think made us decide we wanted to um, volunteer for you. Wow, that's that's really nice to hear, Holly. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for saying all of that. That's 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 so great to hear that off a volunteer as well. Um, you're, you're doing amazing, and I I can only imagine where you're going to take that in your future. Like, do you, do you have any plans for the future in mind? Um. So I mean, I hope I don't like have to keep doing activism for the rest of my life. Hopefully, our government will pull themselves together and actually do something. But I mean, yeah, I definitely want to work with animals or with the environment. I mean, I'm thinking about becoming a vet and maybe working with like wildlife. But yeah, it depends. Maybe I might go into like ecology or environmental science or something. But I'm trying to keep my options open. That's amazing. That's amazing. And and you will you will excel at what you do there. Absolutely, Holly. Um, you work so hard and you've got such a passion. So we. I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone when I say that you will definitely succeed at what you do um, and we wish you all the best with that. In terms of um, getting your daily dose of nature, I, we, we all know by now that you're, you're a massive nature lover and that we don't have um, the same diverse wildlife that you had in your previous home of New Zealand or um, Tasmania. Certainly no Tasmanian devils running through the Cairngorms. <laughs> but um, how, do you, how are you making sure that during lockdown you're getting your daily dose of nature? Yeah well I just yeah make sure I go try and go out for a walk once a day. So we've got I've got two places I normally go because we've got quite a massive road roads coming in front of our house like not directly in front of it but near enough um, and we're quite like isolated there's not a lot of paths or anywhere I can go but I generally go down to the lock side where you can get like lots of um, birds and you can walk quite far or just walking up the hill behind our house and walking along to the next like group of houses in the um, glen along there and yeah it's just like making sure you have time to go out and relax and be in nature and that is really important that people do do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that uh, you've told me when we've been emailing a couple of the super cool creatures that you've seen, um, a lizard to name one of them, but um, what what else have you been uh, looking at during lockdown? Like, have you seen any more interesting um, creatures and animals? Um, well, we have been watching the pine martens in our garden, so we've got a, we've put up a trail camera we've been, and we feed them and we've been watching them for, yeah, quite a while now. Um, we've also had checkered skippers coming in our garden, so they're quite a rare type of um, butterfly and I think you only get them in a few places around the UK and Lock Harbour, where I live, is one of them. And yeah, it was really exciting to just, yeah, to see them again in our garden. Um, what else have we seen? We've also, we also have jays in our garden. I think, I think jays are my favourite corvid. They're just absolutely beautiful birds, but quite shy. Um, yeah, I think that's the ones that come to mind, the pine martens. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Much more than I've seen. Um, I've never seen a pine martin before. That's amazing that you've you've managed to see them. Um, yeah, as you say, you know, if we all just made a little bit more time to spend outside in the natural world and looking for these things and being patient, um, we would have to, we would get to have these magical opportunities like seeing a pine martin running down on the ground or seeing the butterfly, like, yeah, that's, that's lovely to hear, Holly, and it's so nice to hear that that's so important to you at your age. You've seen such an array of animals um, over the course of your life so far um, from different corners of the world, but if there was one animal that you could see in the wild um, that you haven't seen yet, what would it be and why? I think that my answer to that would be wolves. I mean, I'd, I don't know if it counts because I've seen them in like zoos or safaris before, but not in the wild, and I just... I'd love to just see them like in the wild, like yeah, just in such a remote place in nature. Because um, recently, well, not a couple of years ago, I went to Romania and we saw bears there and lots of bears. Uh -huh. But we we didn't see wolves. And yeah, I think what why I really want to see them is because, as I've been saying, I'm really interested in rewilding. And wolves have become such like a figurehead for rewilding and such an important part of that and I've read so many books about them and about rewilding and about the effect wolves have on the like ecosystems around them. I mean for example in Yellowstone where they brought wolves in not a very large number 
and they just completely transformed the national park. I mean, it was extraordinary. They even changed the shape of the rivers because of their behavior. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I mean, and they're just such fantastic animals and I just, yeah, love, I'd love to see them. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that we had them in Scotland only a few hundred years ago and now they're all gone, um, which is such a shame. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I hope you get to see a wolf in the wild one day, but from a very safe distance. <laughs> Um, that's crazy that you've seen bears as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Were they? Was, that was in Romania, yeah. 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 So um, it wasn't like we didn't camp out and look for them. Basically, we went to this park and they feed. So yeah, um, but it wasn't like in a zoo. It was, it was in the wild, but they feed them regularly at this mm -hmm. place. You can watch them. So wasn't aut entirely authentic but it was still quite cool to see them. Thank you for sharing this with everyone today. That's I'm sure everyone will be loving hearing this at home. I know I certainly am right now. I feel I feel very inspired like I need to go into my garden and try and make the most of the the weather outside. It's sort of sunny. It's it's not really very nice but you know you never know what you might see flying through the sky. Do you have any advice for those of us at home like like myself and anyone else watching? Um, do you have any advice on how we can do better for the environment and the natural world during lockdown? Um, well, I'd say that play to your strengths. So if you're good at something, if you're good at like writing or art or, or organising or speaking, then like do that within activism because you get lots of people, well, like protest, act, yeah, campaigning and activism isn't all about like going out on the streets and waving a banner it's like what other people are doing with behind the scenes or with art and with writing is really important I mean we wouldn't be making the change that we are without those people doing what they're good at and like um don't like sort of donating their skills to the movement and and doing what they're good at within that so I think it's really important to not like don't do what I did don't rush in and just try everything out at once like think about what you want to achieve and what you want to do within environmentalism and within animal welfare and then also, yeah think about what you're good at and then try and find your niche within um the movement that's that's very wise advice holly um do you yeah do, do you think that everyone can do their bit for the environment do you think we can all help definitely i mean i don't think people should like put themselves next to other people and say they're doing more than me even when you can't physically or mentally do any more. I think it's, you, you, do, you can just do your bit. You can't really do more than you can. I mean, so yes, I mean, every little helps. You should definitely try your best and do as much as you can, but I don't think you should compare yourself with other people and feel bad for not doing like how much they're doing. Yeah. Uh, well, do you know, Holly, if you don't fancy your career as a vet, you could absolutely have a career as a motivational speaker because that is sound advice and very well said. Um, I hope everyone at home is listening to that. I know that I will go away and take a lot from this conversation today. So thank you very much for sharing everything. And I guess to end um, our interview on, do you, do you think that we have any lessons to be learned from lockdown? And not, not in terms of... Um, coronavirus itself but in terms of the effect that we have on the environment and on natural um the natural world yeah i think there's yeah there's so many lessons we can take from this but the key things are like i think are how we can change because lots of people were saying how before there was no alternative to the system we had we just have to like just do our best within that system but we have seen like with the reduction of air pollution less traffic um, more active travel, more wildlife, that we can change. We can change drastically within a really short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so we need to take like what we've learned from coronavirus and apply it to climate change, ecological breakdown, animal welfare. And another thing that I think we've learned is in terms of animal welfare and also environmental the environment is the way we treat animals and so coronavirus came from the wildlife trade and from cramming lots of animals really close together where in an environment they're not adapted to and i think while we continue to do that these pandemics will keep on happening and so we really need to 
change the way we treat animals, the way change the way we treat the environment, and really start to understand that we can't do things like that and get away scot free. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's lots of things we can learn, but I think just our behaviour towards the planet is something that I think people are beginning to understand, and we can't continue with that. Yeah, absolutely, Holly. Very well said, and. You know, as you say, we're starting to realise this. It's maybe some of us can say too little, too late. But I, I don't think it's ever too late to start caring. And um, you, you don't think that either. We, you know, there's, as you said, there's things that we can all get involved with now uh, to do better and learn from our mistakes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that's amazing, Holly. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's it's been really inspirational, and I, I um yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for speaking with us today and joining us for One Kind Fest. We are so honoured to have you as a guest. Um, we always are. We're so honoured to have you as a volunteer. And um, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and best of luck with your weekly climate strikes. I imagine you'll be finishing up for summer now, will you? Um, no, I, th I think we plan on doing it throughout the summer. So throughout the summer as well. Wow, that's what we've done before. So I don't. Yeah. Amazing. Holiday. Saving the world never ends. You don't get a summer holiday from that, do you? Nope. <laughs> oh well. Thank you so much, Holly. Anyway, and for everyone watching at home. Please, if you can spare a few pounds, donate to our festival this week. Um, it's been amazing. We've got so many great speakers like Holly, although I'm sure everyone else will find it very difficult to top that. So thank you from myself and the One Kind team. Uh, Holly, do you have anything to say for everyone watching at home? Well, I just, well, first I'd like to say thank you very much, Kirsty <laughs> and team at One Kind first for having me speaking here today and also for being just so supportive of my activism and allowing me to be part of One Kind not official team but allow me to just be part of one kind and help you out with activism holly you are always part of the official one kind team don't say that we the volunteers are the one kind team absolutely so thank you so anyway have a lovely afternoon holly and see you later bye bye